How's it going, YouTubers? Nightmare7 here and back with another toy review. And in celebration of the 13th anniversary of Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, released way back in 2009, I thought I'd review one of, an old, one of their old figures from back then, released in that year. That being the main villain of that movie, The Fallen. That's right, The Fallen has risen again. And today I decided to review him in celebration of 13 years of the second movie. Yay! 13 years ago today. If you guys remember, Transformers Movie 2, Revenge of the Fallen, was released way back in 2009. 13 years ago today. I remember seeing it on the big screen when I was 8 years old. I remember that time. On the movie night, on its release... 13 years ago today on the big screen way back in 2009 you guys so in celebration of the 13th anniversary now i would have done the same thing for the last night since this tuesday was actually um the fifth anniversary but i do not have a quintessa figure i never got that infernicus figure the um, legion class one the three paint of the um uh prime abonymous <laughs> yeah i never got that figure sadly so i wasn't able to get that was the only way i could get quintessa and there was no, I remember that one was a Toys R Us exclusive, but there's no Toys R Us near me where I live. So, yeah, and it's been years, and it's sad that Toys R Us is out of business. It's really sad. But today I decided to review for Revenge of the Fallen, The Fallen. So here we have The Fallen in his, uh, his vehicle form, which is supposed to be a Cybertronian Destroyer, I think. Now, I know The Fallen never transformed, but that's okay. I don't. But it's nice that we still got a figure for him. Hasbro was able to give him a fake, needed to give him a vehicle form as a figure, or else he wouldn't be called a Transformer. Kind of like what they did with Movie 1 Scorponok, the deluxe figure, who I reviewed not too long ago with Blackout. So here we have the Fallen, and if I'm being honest with you, this looks really cool. This looks very nice. And he does have some molded in landing gear. Now, you might not see any wheels. Well, because he's a Cybertronian mode, he's not really going to be landing. He's going to be flying. And he could destroy some Autobots. Bang, bang, bang. Now, I think this is supposed to be the official transformation. I actually got this guy pre-owned. I actually want to give a shout-out to the person who actually who actually purchased this figure from. And I want to give a shout-out to... It's actually a t from a toy shop called... Toy de Jour, located in Chicago, Illinois. They gave me a good deal on um, The Fallen. So I want to give a big shout out to them. Thank you so much, Toy de Jour. The shout out's for you. So The Fallen, like I said, never transformed, but Hasbro needed to give him an all, a vehicle mode, or yeah, a second mode, so he could be, like I said, be named a Transformer. But, and it was just really cool. It can also focus on a little bit of movie accuracy. Now, this, yes, these are spring loaded feet, which looks ridiculous. But if you look, if you don't really look at the feet too much, it's not really too bad. Still a very nice figure. The Fallen. I guess, I'm guessing this would be his cockpit if somebody were to come in. <laughs> it kind of looks like a rat face. <laughs> a little bit. Like an evil rat. <laughs> but still a very nice figure. The Fallen is a very nice character. I actually like the design on The Fallen. Especially for being the main villain of Michael Bay's second Transformers movie. It's really nice. Now, since he is, he's never, um, since he's supposed to be a destroyer, but if you want now, he does have seven visible arms. You can see the, um, the hands right there, visible hands. But if you want, now, one thing I found out, if you rotate these forward, it could actually hide the, um, the arms a little bit. Now, if you look at from this angle, it's not. It might not. You might not be able to tell that well. If you hear any barking, that's my dog. Sorry about that, you guys. But these could act like some firepower when he's flying. If you hear my dog, I'm really sorry about this, you guys. My dog always acts barks at my dad. So if you put the landing gear away while he's flying, he could act like he's shooting some Autobots. Pew pew pew. He actually did teleport in the movie as well, which is pretty awesome. And. And so, landing gear. Now, the orange could act like some ener energon that's like absorbing to make it look like he's um 
gaining energy, especially from the sun, which he tried to take down in the movie, but was obviously wasn't able to because of when Prime tried to stop him. So he wasn't able to contract the sun's energy, <laughs> which sucks for him. Hey, it's always winners always always go up with the heroes, you guys. So not much I can say about the Fallen's vehicle mode, but it is really nice. Sir, it might be get a little bit hollow in the back, but it doesn't bother me. Hey, let me be honest with you guys. Hollowness in G1 has... <laughs> I mean, hollowness in Transformers has been a thing. Sorry if I said, sorry I said G1. Well, it's because if you guys have any G1 figures, you'll know that they also have hollowness. It's been a thing, you guys. It's been a thing since G1, you guys. Nothing new there. So I'm not complaining. Shouldn't, neither should you. So for a com for some... some bleh. Sorry, if I could talk today for some comparisons. Here he is. Here is the Fallen next to Optimus. Now, this is Voyager Prime, of course. I'm not using the leader figures because that was way off scale. So, here it is next to my. Hey, I'm really sorry about this, you guys. Trying to. There we go. Here he is next to my Voyager class Optimus. Movie 1 RoboVision Optimus, which is exactly the same mold. Megatron. Oh shoot, I'm gonna... Oh, there we go. Hold still. So here, here's the fall next to Megatron. His apprentices. I have failed you, my master. Ironhide. Starscream. Now, this is actually Dark of the Moon Voyager class Starscream, which is exactly just a re which is just a repaint of the original Revenge of the Fallen Starscream, which I no longer have. I actually got that rid of that figure in a trade. As long as I was able to get this figure, I didn't mind trading my uh, Re Revenge of the Fallen Starscream, and thankfully I got him. My, this is Dark of the Moon Target exclusive Starscream. Again, repaint of the original Revenge of the Fallen one. So it's the exact same mold, just done in, um, I guess, a more screen accurate paint job. Minus the silver tattoos. <laughs> but exactly the same mold. Ratchet. Now, again, this is my Dark of the Moon Voyager class Ratchet. It was exactly the same mold as the old movie one. Voyager, which was repainted several times. This was the last repaint, which again doesn't bother me. I, I love Ratchet. And just because here he is next to a movie one fi deluxe figure, that being Drone Swindle from the video game. From the movie one game. Just because. And for one more comparison, you guys. Here he is next to Ge Deluxe Gears, who's also an ROTF figure. Just because. So here's the Fallen next to Gears. Alright, now I am going to transform the Fallen, or if the Fallen is going to teleport to robot mode. So, Fallen, transform. All right, you guys, here we, here we have the Fallen in his robot mode. Now, before we can move on, let's actually do some, some comparisons just to get over with. Now, this guy is really big for, for Voyager. Remember how Voyager used to be this big? Now, they just aren't as big anymore. Hang on, let me angle this real quick. Uh, hang on. I'm very sorry about this, you guys. Again, I think that I think that's good. So for some comparisons with the fallen, give me one moment. All right, so now that I got my camera properly angled, here he is next to again movie one Swindle. Just because, just to show, just to show you how he looks next to some of the older deluxes back from back then. So here he is next to Swindle.
Here he is next to Megatron, Voyager Megatron, of course. Hang on, let me fix the. So here he is next to Megatron. Now I always get get confused. Is Megatron supposed to be that short? Is Megatron supposed to be shorter than the Fallen or the same height? I realized that the Fallen is also a big character, at least from the video game. In the video game, he look it looks like he's just a little bit taller than Megatron. Not this much taller, but let's say about I want to say around this type of height, around there. So the Megatron would be around there from the Fallen, from the video game anyway. So if the Fallen's supposed to be the biggest character, not counting Devastator because he's a combiner, he is huge, and Demolishor, who was actually that huge Decepticon that Prime jumped on in the beginning of the game, in, Sh in, the, in the game, in the beginning of the movie in Shanghai. I'm assuming the Fallen's still supposed to be shorter than Demolishor. So I'm guessing from the tallest, the tallest would be Devastator, of course, and then the second tallest would be Demolishor, I'm guessing the third tallest would be the Fallen out of the main Babers characters. And I'm assuming the Fallen's also supposed to be taller than Megatron. Since Megatron is actually the tallest Decepticon villain in general. I'm assuming this is, could be accurate. I don't have Studio Series ROTF Megatron. I don't really have as many Studio Series figures. Hardly any to be honest. I do have some, just not that many. I believe Studio Series Megatron is about the same height as the Fallen. And here he is next to. Here, here is the fallen next to Gears. Oh shoot, my camera holder here. snapped off. Oh, so he's gonna hold it. Should I have moved it? Here he is next to. Oh, I can't believe this. Hang on, you guys. All right, guys. Sorry about this delay. My phone can't. My phone holder broke. I right, see that. She had tried to fix it, but I couldn't. This sucks. I'll just buy a new one. And so, anyways, here is the fallen next to Optimus. Again, this is the repaint of Prime. Just see how they look. Boo. Alright. Now I doubt I actually showed them off. Hang on, let me shoot. I'll get over it, you guys. Don't worry. I'll get I'll be fine. Here he is next to Starscream. Now again, this is also the Revenge of the Fallen Starscream mold repainted for the Dark of the Moon line. Here is the Fallen next to Ratchet. And for one more comparison, yep, you guessed it. Oh, hang on. Gotta fix them a little bit. Here is the Fallen next to. Hey, on. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry about this, you guys. My Ironhide figure is very dusty. And it's the movie one Ironhide. Here he is next to Ironhide. Now, as you can see, the Fallen's a bit taller than Ironhide. Right, that's enough. Now for articulation, the Fallen can, um, sorry, I need to bring him a bit forward. The Fallen can, um, he can do 160, 360 degrees, but it gets hindered by this piece. And same, he can do, um, a little over 90 degrees, or I think 180 degrees, like that. He can, um, throw on a little mushroom peg, so 
You can do a 360, but it gets hindered by that piece there, which we'll get to soon. He has, um, doesn't really have much head articulation, but he does, he can, um, do this. Which I don't think it shows any mech alive, since this figure's supposed to have a mech alive. But he does have, he can do, um, ah, oh, soccer kick goal, unless he wants to show off his feet. It gets pretty limited though due to transformation. Now the head, if you lift this head down. Oh, some clear pieces show off. Give me a moment, let me try to fix that. All right, you guys, I managed to get them out. They got stuck a little bit, but also when you lift up here and on the other side, it may show off some like he's, he's absorbing energy or energon. To defeat the Autobots, like, or just uh, absorbing energy from the sun. Like, he's gaining energon right now out in his body. Even the orange stuff, the orange paint details could show off, like, could look like energon throughout his whole body, which is pretty cool. Which I believe is the Mech Alive. If you remember, figures back then used to have a Mech Alive feature, where, uh, which I think this would be the Mech Alive. And also, um, when you rotate here, you get more clear bits, which I don't think can come come out. Which I don't, yeah, I don't know that like they can. It looks like they're just together. And it can look like, um, he's absorbing energy, energy on. And it also could look like he's getting ready to fight some Autobots. So again, it looks like the Fallen is ready to defeat some Autobots. And if you want for a more accurate look, you remember in the beat from the movie when we saw him for the first time when Megatron went back to Cybertron, we got these ports and they could connect right here. Hang on, you guys. Which we actually did see him. They connect very loosely, but you could see something like this that the following we actually did see in the movie. It's not connecting that well. Hang on. Now, see, it can connect well, but it's not, it's not really the same solid plastic. It's actually soft plastic. Same thing with his arms, which are on fingers, which has several fingers. Oh. See? He has... He has, like, what? How many fingers? Eight fingers per hand. Wow. And one thing that bothers me are the spring-loaded features. When, you, when he isn't touching the floor... They spring back up. I don't know why they did that. It wasn't really necessary. But. It's still overall a great figure. Now I believe we are going to be getting a Studio Series Fallen. Next year I think. Which would be really cool. I know we're getting a Studio Series Sideways. Which I might might not pick up you guys. I'm, not just, I'm just not happy with the newer figures being small. And being more expensive dude. Figures back then are not this big anymore same thing with the voyagers leaders are just not as big anymore and are charging us more especially the new legacy blixwing Ugh, that figure not even leader size current leader size which is just a rip off they're ripping us off so i'm definitely not buying that but they are releasing a um we i just saw today on the internet we're getting a um a new buzz 44 pack which is the creatures colliding i think that was I think that's what it was called, which consists of a gold bug repaint of the Netflix B, which I definitely want to get, and a um, kickback repaint named Ransack, which I might get, also with a um, a um, uh, Beast Wars Predacon figure named Skywops, I think, which I'm, I'm not a fan of Beast Wars. I'm definitely not going to buy the set for that. Same thing with Predacon Scorponok. Also from Beast Wars. I'm not a fan of Beast Wars, so I'm definitely going to get rid of those if I can get the packs soon. They are going to be Target exclusives, sadly, which sucks. All Buzzwordy figures are Target exclusives. But not much I can say now about the Fallen. But if you still, if you can find this guy for a reasonable price, or if we can get a Studio Series Fallen, if you don't mind paying more for that. Well, I think this one costs a lot more now. But if you just want a movie Fallen figure for your collection, if we do get the stu a Studio Series version, which I think comes out next year, I think... Then I'll just get that one, alright, you guys. But that's gonna be it, you guys. It'll be like my review of the 13th anniversary by celebrating the 13th anniversary of 
Revenge of the Fallen, reviewing the main villain, that being, of course, the Fallen. So stay tuned for my next toy review, guys. Stay safe out there. It's officially monsoon season here in Arizona, and we have another storm coming. It looks like we're having another storm coming. Stay safe out there, you guys. Nightmare 70 out.